Yeah, good morning, everyone. It's time to get started here today. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. 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 Exciting. I heard the music as you guys are practicing this morning, and I thought, yeah, I miss it. I missed it last Sunday, and I apologize, but I had a 24-hour bug or something, you know, just kind of got me down on the weekend. So um, then I had to go do a COVID test just to make sure everybody's safe <laughs> yeah but I got 10 days off from work <laughs> I just got to figure out how to get paid for it <laughs> oh my all right you guys remember brother stoner he preached a good message there when he came here didn't he something along the line of what was that uh Kill the king or something along that. That's what's stuck in my head anyway. And uh, speaking of probably the carnality of human, humankind, our flesh likes to rise up. Well, guess what the lesson is about today? And this was about that many years ago as it was written. And we got our schedules twisted around a little bit. So I wound up with the lesson on carnality. Yay. <laughs> You know, talking about the flesh and our wants and our desires, you know, we're all human. We all like to enjoy a little few things, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, we got to watch our flesh. Because, uh, you know, Paul did say uh, he dies daily. Uh, I, you know, I, you got to assume that he's talking about the flesh because it's the flesh. When you miss church, you know, this is a good indicator. When you miss church, two, three weeks, uh, other people is going to notice it. I noticed it in a few people one time. I'm not going to say any names or anything. <laughs> but they were out for a while, and then they came back, and they kind of acted like nothing was really wrong. But their spirit was different. And that's called the flesh. Our flesh will rise up, and uh, so subtle, and we got to be careful of that. So when we come into the presence of the Lord, that is a lot of times we are putting aside our f flesh. And we got to conquer that daily. But sometimes we may not always get that conquered. And so referring to that, I had, Pastor just said a couple minutes ago, I had all week. <laughs> yeah, well, I sat down one day. I think I might have got 10 minutes and <laughs> I was up doing something else. So then I sat down another day, and I put a little more time in, about an hour or something, and <sighs> something else come up. So I, you know, I just could not get myself focused to get onto this lesson because, I don't know, maybe it was my flesh didn't want to deal with this lesson. <laughs> uh, ouch, you know, what do I say? <laughs> and uh, Paul is the one that's talking about this, where I'm referring, this lesson is referring to, it's out of 1 Corinthians 1 and 1 through 15, and 3, 1 through 8. And we'll also be in, uh, I'm going to refer back to the book of Acts uh, 18 as well, too. Um, but the church of God, which is the body of Christ, beginning at the day of Pentecost. You guys know the day of Pentecost. That was a pretty awesome day. I mean... They went to the upper room, and there they tarried. There they waited for the promise. Jesus said, tarry there until, I, or until you're endued with power from on high, the promise of the Father. So there they are in this room, approximately 120 people, and uh, they're conducting their business. They're conducting their prayers. They're conducting what they're supposed to be doing. And pretty soon, you guys know the story, the mighty Russian wind that blew through. And the Holy Ghost came in and settled upon them, filled them with the Holy Ghost. And then Peter, he got to preach that day. And um, uh, what was that? Verse um, 37, Acts, second chapter of Acts. Um, or let me back up a little bit here. Acts 2.14, Peter preaches the first gospel message to those. And he really laid it on them and condemned them for killing the one that came to save them. And so uh, 37 is when conviction fell. 
And this is after they had their experience with the Holy Ghost. Well, the Holy Ghost was speaking through Peter. And conviction fell, as it should. And so when conviction falls on us, what is the best thing that we can do? What must we do to be saved? Right. So here we are. Um, Peter gives the answer to that, and that is obviously repent. You can know verse 38 Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay. Then verse 41, Then they gladly received the word and were baptized. And the same day there was added unto them about 3,000 souls. Can you imagine 3,000 people around this neighborhood? How in the world? This PA is loud enough inside here. <laughs> Without PA, you know, just talking, you know. 3,000 people. So 3,000 souls were that added that day and were baptized. And so um, that was the beginning of the church. And uh, verse 42 through 47, they continued. They continued steadfastly, not changing nor wavering, holding fastly, firmly to the apostles' doctrine. Okay, so when you're not really not sure what's going on, they hold fast to what they know, and that is, what they were taught, and they were from the apostles. So they're they're uh, studying, they're they're praying, they're going to the temple. They go to the temple to read the scripture. Okay, so um, continue daily going to the temple for prayer and reading of the scriptures. Uh, also, in one accord with unity, they did this. In verse forty-six. Okay, now verse forty-seven, and God added daily such as should be saved. So when the Holy Ghost is working and, in f and uh, revival is booming in the church, souls start coming in. That's exciting. The waters that we say is stirred in the Holy Ghost and the baptism and the Spirit of the God is moving and drawing. That's how, uh, that's how it worked at back then in the day of Pentecost. So how does it work today? The same way. The dead church, nobody gets excited about. But yet when you get God moving and the fire stirring in the whole, in the, in the, service and and pretty soon you know people are getting excited and they're uh wanting to wanting more they want to feel what you're feeling and when you start seeing people getting excited well they want what they've got so here they are they want it they desire it and they seek after it and so they're um growing today i say we're growing we're not large in number but we're growing yet god is still moving and that's exciting. It is exciting to see these souls come in. And it's exciting to see the new converts class back there. And it's exciting to see uh, the baptism of water being stirred. And that's a whole new experience for me when Pastor put me in there to, to baptize. And, whoo, I've heard it all my life the words that you're supposed to say, right? I was tongue tied, tangled up. I didn't, uh, blah. <laughs> And so Pastor told me, and I wrote it down so I could look it over real quick so it's fresh in my mind, and I still get up there. And can you believe it? It's just small little words to say. <laughs> but I'm excited, though. Yeah, the name of Jesus is, is what's important. Amen. When they go in the water, that is burial. And uh, their repentance was already prior. They're burying that dead man. And when they're in that water, and uh, well, you know what I get to see? It's exciting. The innocence. Oh, I saw that the first time. Oh, wow. And then uh, they went down, and they like this, and then they come up, and uh, they just, you know, like, you know, and that's that weight of sin being lifted off. Amen. Amen. And that is exciting to see that. Amen. So that is the first church that was uh, back in the day of Pentecost. And then keep referring to ourselves today because it's really no different. God doesn't change. People, all the people in the world today, it really doesn't change much. So um, emotions I'm talking about, you know, knowledge and everything else, all that gr grows. But So uh, if, if a new convert would do what they did here in verse 46, and um, I didn't lost it here, continue daily. Okay, you don't have to take every day come to the church, but every day... You, you really should open the word up and read. And pretty soon that hunger will start to grow and you'll start to want to understand a little bit more. And uh, praying, 
Ukraine. That's pretty huge. Because what are you doing? Oh, that carnal man is not getting his way. That's what's happening. <laughs> oh, my. That carnal man, when he gets to have his way, you jump out of bed, you get dressed, you go get breakfast. I mean, what can I, I do today? Yeah. Okay, when you pray and when you read the scripture, Lord, what would you have me to do today? It changes. Who can I talk to today? So there's a big difference there when the carnal man's up and walking and talking or if the spiritual man's up walking and talking. <laughs> All right. So um, I have to find myself again. <laughs> so, with, oh, uh, so here they are. Um, they're coming with their tithe and their offerings, their giving of the church, and look what they did. They went and sold all their possessions. <laughs> How many's willing to do that? <laughs> oh, my. But, you know, God, would he take care of you? If it's done in right heart and right spirit, I mean, yes, I, I believe he would. However, that's not a requirement. What is required is our tithes and our offerings. And everybody here is faithful. I'm not going to say <laughs> Please don't start reading into what I'm trying to say or anything. But when that gets withheld, that's when you start to see some of the blessings of God start drawing back a little bit. And that's the carnal man. Well, I, can, I need this for something else. I, you know, and this is, this is carnal. This is flesh. You're going to wrestle with this. So you've got to conquer that man. First fruits. When the money comes in, this is what goes to God. So tithe and offerings. Okay, then we also come in with daily prayer, which I already talked about. And we come in to the house of the Lord when the doors are open. As you are today when it is gloomy out today somewhat. And I was telling pastor, I didn't get to sleep till midnight because my goofy CPAP machine wouldn't let me and it was messed up. And I was fighting with that thing. And I did not want to get up this morning. Doris's alarm went off at 7. I ignored it. <laughs> About 7.45, I finally called, clawed my way out of bed. Had to get ready. And then Doris had come in afterwards. She got done. and I figured you'd be upstairs already studying some more. I, well, I, I want to be. <laughs> I just couldn't get this flesh moving. So pray for me in this service. Amen. <laughs> We're all there, though, because... Just because you get filled with the Holy Ghost and you get an awesome experience in God does not mean that kernel flesh is not going to be there. You wake up in the morning, you will find that flesh. Yep. During the night, you may even find that flesh. Whatever comes in in your mind at night, that's important too. Conquer it. If you're awake, if you're awake, because I've, I've had this happen before, you know, and, and I rebuke that thought in Jesus' name, you know. Put that under the blood. Keep your heart and your mind pure. Amen. And it says, uh, and they continued in the house, and uh, see where it was, with gladness and singleness of heart. With gladness, everybody knows that. Everybody's cheerful. Everybody's happy. Everybody's happy with each other. Singleness of heart. Well, what are we talking about? It's kind of simple, really. Honestly, faithfully sincere with only one aim or purpose that kind of narrows it down to being focused on what you're doing you ever see somebody focused on something sometimes jonathan if you give him something to do and he's got a mission look out he's <laughs> that's a good example of that he's focused he's going to do that you know he says excuse me as he bumps you <laughs> there's singleness right there but you cannot accomplish this gladness and singleness of heart when you have a carnal heart. All right. So, um, I'm going to jump up here to Acts 18 now and um, talk about a little bit of this here, about the first half of the chapter. So, assembly of the believers had the beginning under the ministry of Paul, and uh, chapter 18 gives us some info on how they started. Chapter 18, 1 through 3, I'm not going to read it because that'll take up a whole lot of time. But then again, I might have time, I don't know. 
Okay, 18, 1 through 3 is talking about Paul. And um, he departs from Athens, and he goes to Corinth. And there he is met up with uh, Aquila and uh, Priscilla. Priscilla. And um, this here is talking about back um, when they were forced out of um, Rome. Okay, now I'm getting my notes here now. Uh, Paul, first he was a tent maker. That was his skills. That's something that he fell back on. And um, so he needed to support himself, and he had to eat and everything. So, you know, that's what he did. He fell back on what he could do. He found a few Jews, a couple that was already Christians, and joined with them in this occupation. Being forced out of Rome in for, uh, 49 AD because of religious controversy, the emperor, Claudius, expelled the Jews. Now, when the couple, uh, Aquila and Priscilla, went to Corinth for asylum, so Paul joined up with them and here in Corinth. Uh, verse 4, Paul went to the synagogue weekly, teaching both Jews and Gentiles to, and to believe in Jesus as the Christ. Verse 5, thank God for PMI. Okay, a little plug for missions here. Because they need to devote people to give a, their offerings so that they can do their, uh, their work that they're sent to do in that city. And because of that, um, they, can, they don't have to rely on their skills to support themselves. So in other words, if a pastor had to go out and do an 8, 12-hour job every day, he wouldn't be able to do it as be as attentive as he is because he's, you know, he can't be pastor 24, <laughs> so to speak. So um, uh, devote their time and efforts to preaching and teaching God's word. All right, uh, verse 6, the Jews opposing Paul preaching even to the point of blaspheming the name of Jesus, um, they opposed him because of his teaching. They did not believe that Jesus was the Christ. And Paul shook uh, off his garments and said, your blood be upon your, your heads, and left to go to the Gentiles. And so, that's a little stern. But you cannot change the gospel. You can't change it, no matter, no matter how bad you may want it. If your family don't believe you, and they're against you on it, hold your ground. You know, as Paul had said, he shook his garments. Your blood's upon yourselves. I'm out of here. All right. Verse 7 and 8. Two people gave Paul help and uh, connections to continue his ministry among the Jews and Gentiles in Corinth. Justice, one of the who had worshipped God and... I'm not sure if I can say his name right. Crispus believed in the Lord with all his uh, house. Many Corinthians, hearing and believing, were baptized. The church is starting to grow. The Holy Ghost is not being confined. <laughs> you know, think of COVID. <laughs> you can't confine God. He's going to move somewhere. Amen. Verse 9 and 11 through 11. God speaks and uh, confirming his will to Paul through a vision. Now, Paul probably uh, was relieved to be able to stay in one place and establish a church here, and Scripture says about a year and a half. You know, Paul was a missionary. He moved all around. So where he was able to sink his feet in a little bit and, you know, get rooted here. So this was the beginning of the church here. This is kind of will give you a little foundation on this uh, uh, at Corinth. Okay, so the assembly of the believers at its beginning under the ministry of Paul in Acts 18 contains some of the information regarding how the church began. Now, these people were, as it was in Acts 2, 4, uh, they were uh, all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of the gave them utterance, the same Holy Ghost today that we receive. But this is the, the beginning of these people. And uh, Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, was one of the first believers in the Corinth uh, followed by many other Corinthians who believed and were baptized. Paul said that the preaching to them was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and the power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God, 1 Corinthians 2, 4 through 5. With man's wisdom. You know, that man's wisdom, it's great. Um... Uh, but if you get up there and you're speaking with all these big words and your eyes begin to cross and glaze over, it's not doing much good. 
you know, you start speaking way up here, so to speak, and we're down here. So uh, man's wisdom is great for some things. I'm not, I'm not really knocking knowledge and stuff, okay, but I'm saying that we've got to be where the people are at. And so um, the power of God will put you there because God knows. But, and so God will use uh, what's, what, who is, whoever is available, whoever presents himself available, God will use you as long as you're filled with the Holy Ghost and, you know, living right and <laughs> all the above. <laughs> all right. So the, the church at Corinth had a good beginning. They had a good foundation. Paul addressed this uh, as sanctified in Christ, Jesus, called to be saints, 1 Corinthians 1 and 2. Uh, sanctified, <coughs> excuse me, uh, means dedicated, consecrated, made holy. That's a pretty good word. So uh, called to be saints. Who's all called to be saints? Everybody. <laughs> Everybody's a saint today. Amen. We are called to be saints. Um, not only that, uh, he also declared that in everything that they, they were enriched, they excelled in teaching, preaching, and knowledge as the testimony of Christ was confirming in them. For a person to have God's New Testament in t or testimony confirmed means that he is not only spirit-filled, but also a witness to those about him. Furthermore, Paul wrote that uh, so that the Corinthians would, uh, would come behind in no gift as they were waiting for the coming of Christ Jesus. So they weren't lacking. They would not be lacking. Paul was an awesome man, very smart. Kind of like a good shepherd today, huh? Our pastor, he's, he's real sharp on that. He'll watch after you. Uh -huh. he'll, he'll test you. He'll lead you. He'll encourage you. Amen. There is not much a higher state of an experience in this life than that to be what well, is described here. But in the face of all these blessings, now this is where the carnal man, you got to watch out for him. The Corinthians believers uh, focused on their eyes on different ministers and became divided as to which leader that they would follow. One group accepted Paul. Another group proclaimed Apollos and their, as their leader. And another group said that they were under Cephas, Peter. And still another group claimed Christ as their only leader. So there's four. They were divided. What does the devil do? He divides. He takes this half over here. He takes these guys believing this. He takes these guys over here. <laughs> and he whispers in their ear. You know, and then the carnal fleshly, oh, well, I want this, or I'm going to do this, or I'm, you know, I don't like this, and pretty soon, you know, you know the stories of the church divides over color of carpet, you know, just anything, <laughs> it don't matter. <laughs> it, it, it's simple stuff sometimes, but, you know, it's no different today, and so, um, uh, in our day, many assemblies have proven themselves to be like Corinthians, but sadly, the modern Paul, Apollos, and Cephas have often proved that they do not have the noble character that, is, that the apostles had. The Corinthians church could not carry their division very far because the leaders refused to accept this division. Amen. The spirit of division, uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and 1. Let me flip over there real quick. And brothers, I, I could not speak unto you as to spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. And uh, you guys know this passage here. For ye are yet carnal, in verse 3. So, division. This is where the enemy can get his foothold in. And we, we cannot allow that. We have to stay unified. As it was in the day when they first started. They were with one accord, in one place. They were unified and then steadfastly. And they uh, read the word and they prayed. This is where we got to keep ourselves sharp on that. Hallelujah. Um, house divided. Uh, Luke eleven seventeen. Brother Joe, can you read that real quick? Sure. Luke eleven seventeen.
Amen. So if you have a house and you knock out the supporting walls, <laughs> you're in trouble, right? Because uh, Pastor and I were looking at the house uh, where we're at and we're trying to decide if that was a load-bearing wall or not. We're going to remove it out. Well, if you knock it out and it's a load-bearing, it's going to sag down, <laughs> you know, and you're going to have problems. You're going to have your roof begin to leak and the foundation, you know, and it's just all sorts of things. So anyhow, uh, concept is still the same in church. This half over here, this half over here, these guys over here. You guys aren't going to get anything accomplished. Nobody is. Nobody is. But it takes God to bring us back together. And that's not, you know, divi division is one thing, but yet God can still make us strong. And because of prayer and because of repentance and because of uh, the blood of Jesus, and we are one family, my brothers and my sisters, we are all born into one blood, and that, I mean baptized and uh, born of the Spirit. We are God's family. So we can still stand against the enemy. And I've often thought of times that we have prayed and we put people against the four corners of this church when we prayed, and then we went around the city. We're unifying. We're unifying. We're standing strong. Amen. Sister Julie and them guys, they went around and marched around that property over there. I still ain't forgot that. <laughs> Another ch church is proclaiming that land, but okay. All right. Um, where was I at now here? Um, Paul has tried to shame them by asking them, is Christ divided? Paul was crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? 1 Corinthians 1, 13. He added, thank God that I baptized none of you but uh, Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I baptized my own name. Amen. 1 Corinthians 1, 14 through 15. Be wise, keen, and alert. Apostle to the Gentiles gave them no encouragement in such thing, but rather reproved them. Since they were divided, Paul told the Corinthians that he could not speak to them as spiritual, but as the carnal, even as babes, which we read that scripture. He had spoke to them as babes who must have milk, since they were unable to eat the meat. No doubt they had been in truth long enough that they should have been able to eat meat. Only spiritual believers, however, can eat meat, but they that which are carnal, for ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying, strife, division, ye are not are ye not uh, carnal and walk as men? 1 Corinthians 3 and 3. Paul taught, uh, I'm sorry here, let me, okay, that's, uh, we were, here we see that uh, uh, people who has been of the highest kind of record to begin with, spirit filled and blessed and troubled with self life. Even today we are the same thing. This church has had a good beginning. This church has a good, solid foundation. And through the generations of this church, we've had awesome, solid saints. Awesome preachers and pastors. And, but it's the old nature that's going to get you. And uh, neither is it eradicated or destroyed at our conversion or any other time in our life. Furthermore, and this is what brought mind of Brother uh, Stoner, it will sit on the throne of our will and rule us. Isn't that what Brother Stoner preached? Amen. He will sit on the throne and run your day, <laughs> ruin your day. And it's all about, it'll, it'll go from one thing to the next. What can I do to what can I have to what have I got to, you know, the pride of life, the pride of, you know, just on and on, the lust of it. And it just keeps growing and growing. And, you know, and when does it stop? When, no, when you're destroyed. Amen. If we do not allow the Holy Ghost to have a full control of our lives, which would give us the victory, let no one be deceived into believing that at some point in their life, the instantaneous work of grace will eradicate the old nature. We will only be victorious by knowing the truth, and it is the truth that sets us free. Amen. Uh, 
Oh, goodness sakes, I ran out of notes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just finish up here then. Okay. Um, okay, here we are. We, uh, when we acknowledge our weakness to Jesus and call on him for his grace, he will keep us in victory. Amen. That is repentance. That how many, not how many, uh, I know we all do fall in repentance all the time. We go to the blood, we, we repent, we cover ourselves. It is because of that, the carnal man. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 3, Paul did not mention the class who said that they were of Christ when he told the Corinthians that they were carnal. Let us take warning then and refrain, refrain from the saying that we are of Smith or Jones or whoever it may be. Um, I mean, I just lost my place here. Hmm. Seriously, that just left. <laughs> okay, here we are. Uh, let us take warning and refrain from saying that we are of, the, of a whoever it may be, for we are all Christ if we are in him. Amen. Who then is Paul and Apollos but ministers of whom uh, ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, nor he that watereth. But God giveth the increase. Now he that uh, planteth and he that watereth are one. Every man should receive his own reward according to his own labor. You take a, uh, this is growing and planting kind of thinking. You take a seed and you put it in the ground. And then you make sure you got the right nutrients there. And then you water it. And uh, then you get to re reap the rewards. But did you do anything to make that corn grow? I mean, make that corn produce corn? No. That's the part of nature that God is involved in. That's the simplistic of it. But yet, if we uh, do the same thing, Brother Joe comes in and, you know, say, Brother Dwight's over there and he's really getting him planted and rooted in the Word and, and uh, Brother Jim's over here, and he's really getting him, uh, uh, involved in things with God, and he's just really excited and getting me all going. But how does Brother Joe grow? It is by him reading the word and praying, and God gives the increase. Amen. That's, that's, that's the simple simplistics of it. It is very important to find the truth concerning the place that God's ministers hold in the church they are to be honored as leaders, but not to the extent that the church becomes divided over the minister of their choice. Imprudent saints have been greatly harmed uh, the work of the Lord by showing favoritism to uh, individual persons and by only supporting the minister of their own choice. On the other hand, the minister should be very careful not to encourage such saints as cause a division in the church. For the ministers hold together, the saints will hold together, and no one, and if they have no one to lead them, then they cannot hold out long in their di uh, division. But when the word world sees these things, they have the right to ask, what kind of religion is this? And we can answer them, uh, but they may not understand Corinthians Pentecost. And even though it is plain on such things exist early church, it, it, uh, any group should be ashamed if it is holds no higher standard than what Paul uh, reproved. So we don't want to be the uh, uh, Corinthian Pentecost. No, we don't. We want to be on fire. And uh, remember, um, that message still holds true, Brother Stoney preached. I mean, he said it was from God, and oh, I believe it was. Every one of us uh, can apply that message to us. We must be united in the body of Christ. Time is too short. Amen. Uh, so much is going on in this world. And it is happening oh so fast. It's, it's unbelievable. And yet I'm not shocked because I expect that things are going to happen. In a the devil, he knows it. He's got a short time. And his time is now. And it's, it's going to be very aggressive. And uh, when the, especially when the church is pulled out. And uh, uh, the rapture. I know we're all looking, striving for the day of the rapture. But it's, uh, let's see if we can't get some others to go with us. Amen. Let's see this church grow. 
as it is a day getting short, it's this day that ought to uh, encourage us and excite us to to reach out to bring other souls with us. Amen. To see this revival in this, because it, uh, we've yet to see the great, I, I believe there's a great revival in the city. I believe it. We've preached it. We've heard it. We've, we've uh, been prophesied by it here, you know, and uh, there's, and I can't think of it right off the top of my head, but I, there's so much that uh, I have heard in the years past, and I'm still looking forward to that. This church here is going to be uh, lifted up, I believe. Amen. Okay, I'm done rambling. <laughs> God bless you all. A couple more minutes here, and we'll start, well, actually quite a bit, 20 minutes, I'm sorry. <laughs> God bless you.